Ngamba Island Chimpanzee Sanctuary Project is as a result of the threat to the survival of the wild chimpanzees. And the major problem has been illegal trade. Most of the chimpanzees at Ngamba Island have been rescued from people who are holding them as pets. Around 1995-96, there were quite a number of uh, baby chimpanzees that the government of Uganda had rescued from people who were holding them illegally. That prompted the need to have a sanctuary to provide for a better welfare for them. The minimum time that any of the rescued chimpanzees spends in the quarantine is three months. But that really depends on the physical condition, the health of the animal, and also the mental status of the animal. Many times they are so traumatized. Physically, they have been starved. They do not have enough food. So by the time they, we get them, most times they have had lots of diseases that we have to treat. Sometimes they're physically injured. As the example of Little Africa, our estimation was that Africa had been kept in the little wooden box for not less than six months. That was our estimation. And because the box was so small, uh, there was only one little opening at the top of the box. And she was lying on one side for the so many weeks and months that when she was taken out of the box, she did not know how to stretch out her arm or leg because she was used to the position that she had been in. In the quarantine, we had to put her on special diet, we had to clean her up, wash her, we had to make sure she had the right medication to get all the treatment. We do general health check every month for the first three months that they're there. At the end of the three months, the three health check will indicate the health condition of the animal. Then we can make a decision whether it is now the right time to get the animal transferred to the sanctuary to join the rest. But we have had situations whereby the health of the animal is, is too bad that three months is not enough. Africa has been an example. Africa spent 18 months in the quarantine. This is the Africa. The management of Ngamba Island Chimpanzee Sanctuary works very closely with the government of Uganda and the different wildlife agencies, together with security as well. That has been the way that the chimpanzees have been rescued. I have to say that one of the persons who really made this possible was Dr. Jane Goodall herself. Dr. Jane Goodall made a fight with the Ugandan government to say, you know, to create awareness about the plight of chimpanzees and the need for proper welfare of chimpanzees in Uganda. And that is what really brought about the establishment of Ngamba Island. One of the factors that drives environmental degradation is poverty. And so we try to look at people's welfare, people's livelihoods, and see how we can improve their livelihoods so that they don't exert so much stress or you know, so much pressure on natural habitats. There have been cases where people hunt, they set snares in forests to catch small antelopes, uh, wild pigs. Now when they do that, um, the unsuspecting culprits can sometimes be chimpanzees. Here in Uganda, people do not eat primates. So, but they do get caught in snares, which is unfortunate. So to try and uh, reduce that kind of thing, we introduced a snare removal program 
where you actually work with the hunters themselves by offering them some incentive in terms of a monthly salary you get them on your side and then you ask them to help you remove snares from the forest that's one of the activities that the Jen Goodall Institute in Austria has been helping us with by providing funding for Kibale Forest Snare Removal Program um, which serves quite a number of chimpanzees from getting injured by snares set in the forest. I've worked here for the last 17 and a half years. I would really like people, especially people living close to this forest, to be sensitized. They should also know what I know about the chimpanzees. Because we've seen chimps suffering. Among the chimps we have here, there are some amputated chimps. There's one we named Kevin, and he's a, he's a young chimp, but you can really see the way he's suffering. When others are running very fast, he's on three. This hand never reached the ground, so he cannot cope up with the speed of others. And all these are caused by traps or snares that are, sent, are set maybe on the edge of the forest, maybe in the forest. So. Once they have the knowledge, I think they can be responsible too. When this site was taken by Jen Gudo, we didn't know much about the chimpanzees. But when Jen Gudo Institute came in, we got a serious training. And through the training I was given, I came to know that chimps also look different, just like human beings. Uh, you can identify them by seeing the different futures they have among their body. Some of them are brown, some of them are gray in the face, some of them are black. And that was the role of Jen Gudo Institute. When they came here, they made me know much more about wildlife. And right now, as I talk, I feel like I'm just part of the animals that live around here. <laughs>